So Edgex started uh, on my kitchen table, literally. I was the first developer, the first architect, and at Dell, um, we were the founding organization behind all those fuse that became Edgex. And initially it wasn't even like an open source project, it was just what's the right architecture. And we thought you know, very quickly, we need to extend cloud native principles to as close to the device edge as possible for this kind of you know, flexibility and whatnot. And then after about maybe four months of working on it, we're like, this needs to be open. We need an open API, we need open interoperability, do for IoT what, what Android did for mobile. So it started you know, internal to Dell, we put it into open source in April of 2017 through Linux Foundation. Initially, Edgex Foundry um, was distributed um, using Docker. Um, and Docker Compose. We introduced um, this new packaging format called Snaps. It's another way for EdgeX to be distributed to developers on various Linux distros. Uh, we just hit our millionth uh, download of all the containers. There has been a lot of fragmentation, and EdgeX is really trying to provide that platform that uh, dissolves that fragmentation. So you have many cloud providers, you have many connectors. EdgeX is now starting to be that. Um, if not standard, that um, at least that, that platform to which everybody can go to to help bridge the gap between your devices, your cloud, whatever they might be. I think to that extent, we're very, very successful. Um, if we're not a standard, we're coming pretty darn close to. And as a base platform, uh, one of the nice things about the platform is it's always been its flexibility. So yes, it helps to standardize, but at the same time, it allows you to bring in your own secret sauce to provide return on investment, and so that's where EdgeX is like, starting to shine. We've seen lots of progress over the last year with, I think, two, two releases and continuing to build momentum. I think the, I would say the time is, is kind of now. It's really coming of age. It wasn't so much, is this usable, but is this ready for people to put out into production where it's going to have to be supported long term? So, you know, it, you could use EdgeX well before our 1.0 release, but it wasn't to the point where we were comfortable saying, yes, we can support this in an actual production environment long term. So 1.0 was a big milestone for us in that. Um, we're also now looking at uh, you know, what's gonna be our first long term support release where we're gonna give some guaranteed support window on a specific version and a specific set of our APIs. You're gonna see more elements in the management APIs You'll see some more security elements, but also the EdgeX model is not to go do everything because there's value in doing management and security. It's more about just those APIs and you can sell management tools, consoles and, and security tools around it. Of course, analytics, you know, whether it's AI or, or whatever, very, very basic rules engine in EdgeX you know, as it stands today because we wanted it to be where you can do something out of the box, but, but that's where you make money as you sell analytics, sell security, sell management, whatever. Other things in the roadmap trajectory, uh, these new application services make it easier to build north side services to whatever cloud or, or whatever you want. You'll see more around um, kind of east-west communication, so to speak, so, so uh, between peer nodes, so just kind of more message bus type capability, more for sort of true distributed computing, but the trajectory is more plumbing, more enabling features, uh, a little bit more around security and management, but then it's all about that uh, enabling people to build more on top. We see EdgeX Foundry as kind of a lighthouse project. We see EdgeX as a really good, kind of I would say, a, a center of gravity to really coalesce people around and give people something to gravitate towards. And we also think there's a lot of goodness in how do we take this undifferentiated heavy lift, which is this middleware that people can connect to, and kind of amortize that cost of development across a whole bunch of companies because we think it might be difficult for one company to really get paid for all the work that's gonna to have to go into that. So we think an industry or community-based approach is just simply a better, better way to go. Open always wins in the end for scale.